Right, so we are currently on episode 3 of the 9 month cruise reality show and somehow we have a bunch more stuff to talk about and we're only a couple of months in. I hate it here. <laughs> <laughs> like honestly, if there is someone who is currently on the ship watching this video, please keep it up. Please keep the drama coming because if I have free content for 9 months straight, I'm gonna feel like I won the lottery. Now, on the last episode of the nine month cruise, <laughs> wait, I've just realized, I sound like the beginning of like a Netflix show with a recap donor. Previously, on the nine month cruise, Adita was accused of being a swinger. But we are not swingers. But we do like pineapples. Mark Sebastian faced repercussions after saying naughty words. Okay, well, I'm so sorry that you're offended wait. by swear words. And the ship started to flood before they even hit the Drake Passage. I know that lobby stank after that. Will the Drake Passage be too much for the nine month cruise? Let's find out in today's episode. <laughs> yeah, so spoiler alert, they did make it through the Drake Passage. Obviously, they actually had to go through it sooner than what they originally expected. Because if we went the original route, it would have been 55 hours hours of five to six meter wave so instead we will be going the day after tomorrow and we will be doing 22 hours in the drake passage and yeah as you can imagine the conditions weren't exactly great but nothing went overly wrong from what we know i'm on the drake passage on my way to antarctica holy shit yeah, I mean, call me a pussy all you want, but there is zero chance that I would pay to go through that. Now, this is where we got our first update with our favourite character here on the Marky channel, and it's Adita, who had a bit of a tough time during the Drake Passage. It has gotten so much worse than this morning. It literally feels like we have been thrown inside a washing machine, and we're just going around and around in circles in the water. It's just incredible. I literally couldn't make it to the bathroom to go pee. So I feel like this is the right time to remind you guys that someone spent $765,000 to have the experience of being in a washing machine. But yeah, like I mentioned before, they got through the Drake Passage and made it to Antarctica. Now the problem here is, even though it does make complete sense, they couldn't actually step foot on Antarctica, right? Because there's like a thousand people on the ship. But the reason why I said it was a problem is because I tried putting myself in the position of having to go through like the Drake Passage for numerous days, feeling like you're in a washing machine, feeling very seasick, like a lot of people did. So a lot of people posted videos saying they felt sick going through it. And then after that, you just get to go past Antarctica and then watch a small the ship go around and take pictures as we'll see right here rather we get to sail through and we have the next best thing which is this group of photographers who go out on a boat and take cool photos of the boat wildlife and grab a chunk of ice so we can do our own version of a polo plunge and don't get me wrong it looks absolutely beautiful clearly but it's just something i personally wouldn't want to go through but i get why people would i believe there are certain ships that allow you to step foot in antarctica i believe it has to be less than 500 people and you need the right crew with you something along them lines but yeah either way that was four days ago as i'm recording this video let's actually go to an update from a day ago where adita again our favorite character actually posted a video saying that some rumors going around that the cruise is going to be ending early but the rumor that i've been hearing is that uh, royal caribbean is thinking of ending the world cruise in los angeles due to the problems uh, in the Middle East and us not being able to go through the Red Sea and the Suez Canal. This is very, you know, worrying if it does, uh, if, if they have any plans of ending anything and they just haven't come out and said anything yet. So yeah, as you just heard, Adita says there's some rumors going around that the cruise is going to be ending early when they make it to Los Angeles. And looking over at the website, it seems like they're going to make it to LA on February 11th, meaning the nine month cruise would end after two months. Now, when I heard this, I was slightly confused. I just thought if there's certain areas of the world that you can't pass through because of conflicts and whatnot, I was thinking, can you not just take like a different route? Yeah, you might have to go back out of where you came from. I don't really know how it works, right? Because I've never actually like been on a cruise before, but I just thought surely there's more alternatives than just ending it completely two months into a nine month cruise. I mean, looking at the comments, people are asking, where did you hear the rumor? Adita said, pretty reliable source. I wouldn't be concerned. Really hope it's not true. Or that they at least take us up to Dubai. Now, if I had to guess why this rumor started in the first place, it's because it seems like another cruise line under the Royal Caribbean group, the same people who are running this Ultimate World Cruise, actually had a very similar situation just recently. Silver Sea, a cruise line under the Royal Caribbean, 
Caribbean group, altered one of its ship's itineraries this week, according to Travel Weekly. The ship was scheduled to sail through the Red Sea from Aqaba, Jordan, passing through Yemen on its way to Muscat, Oman. A representative for Royal Caribbean Group told the outlet that the cruise will be cut short, ending in Aqaba where guests will disembark. They'll instead return by plane from there. So with this news coming out this week, I'm guessing that that's maybe where the rumour started, but it seems like these new rumours aren't entirely true. In a statement shared with people from Royal Caribbean, the cruise line confirmed it will continue its journey as planned. The Ultimate World Cruise has given guests the opportunity to see the world in a unique way, and we have loved watching their reactions to this incredible experience. This adventure will complete its first segment in February, and we can't wait to kick off the next part of the journey shortly after and begin exploring Asia, the statement says. So it does seem like these rumours aren't true, but I guess time will tell. But just because that rumour isn't entirely true, it does seem like some of the rumours are true, because a lot of people have been saying on TikTok recently that a lot of the destinations that they're supposed to be going just haven't happened. If you want the true drama of the nine month cruise, it's the fact that every single tendled port so far has been cancelled last minute. And from what we've heard, it's caused a bit of chaos because these are all just like last minute changes. And actually looking at Mark Sebastian's recent video, it's a good example of that. I need to make sure I get the first tender. You know what a tender is? I didn't. Basically, they don't dock the boat. You got to get onto a little boat and then that little boat goes to the dock. And I, I need to go see the penguins. There was a bunch of schedule mishaps. Excursions got canceled. I need to see the king penguins. Okay, so as you just heard Mark say, he wants to go and see the penguins. And to do that, you need to actually get on a smaller boat to make it to land. And this is to get off at the Falcon Islands, I believe. As he's also just said, there's been a bunch of delays and plans have changed already before this. Now, unfortunately for Mark and the other guests, in this video, we can see that they're all getting ready to get off the ship. There's a lot of people. It's caused a bit of chaos trying to organize it. It's clearly not organized very well. And then the video it ends by saying that they're not even getting off the ship. Oh, it's starting. Yes. Yeah. So much. Here we go. We need number three. Number Come three. on. There we go. Number three, sure. See? Five. There we go. We made it happen. Please do not yell at me. Ooh, all right. We're not going to have anyone yelling. It's not our fault that you didn't get here early enough, and that's how it is. What? Me. I was sitting next to her the whole time. Yeah, I mean, clearly doesn't exactly seem like the most fun experience in the world. So after all that, we are not even going to the Falcon Islands because it's too rough outside. I, I, I hate it here. <laughs> and you know what? If it is to do with weather, you can't really help that. But you would be incredibly disappointed if you'd paid so much money to go on this cruise and you couldn't go to certain areas that you've been told that you could go to. From the videos we've seen, there have been multiple times where they've had to change the route. There's been multiple times where they thought they were going to reach a destination and then weren't able to get off the destination. If I was on there, I would be extremely disappointed. But I get it, right? If it's weather, you can't really help it. But sticking with Mark Sebastian, he has actually been involved in some drama with another guest on a cruise. Now, it's not the cruise that he is currently on, it's a different cruise, which already sounds pretty baffling, but it all started when Mark actually uploaded this video. 100%, I don't even need to look into it to know that these people are being underpaid. But it's actually not the main wait staff that are being this insistent. It's these other men, usually, who are wearing white coats who are micromanaging the actual wait staff. Okay, so he goes on to talk about the service and kind of complains about not the crew staff, but the people managing the crew staff. But as you heard at the beginning of the video, he says that the crew are underpaid for what they do. And at this point, another TikToker called Dutch World American Girl responds to this video. And she is currently on a cruise. She spends a lot of time on cruises. She actually has on a bio, I live on a ship. And not only does she spend most of her time on cruisers she also used to work on a cruise not as like your normal staff i believe she was like a director so a bit higher up her wage would have been a lot more thing frustrates me more than this so this person has been put on the royal caribbean cruise which is the world crew go cruise going on for nine months he's been put on for what 16 18 days sorry i just love the way she said that because she sounds like the pinnacle members that we've been hearing about you know how we've heard about these pinnacle members kind of looking down on the people who aren't pinnacle members members and maybe have spent a bit less on their ticket. Well, this is exactly how I thought they would sound like, you know, just looking down at Mark because he's only on there for 18 days. And nothing frustrates me more is when someone gets on, knows nothing about the cruise industry, and then starts talking about how my former colleagues don't make money. The myth that they don't make a living wage. But of course, he's put on this cruise ship to create drama and tea. Um, all for likes and for following. Okay, so as you heard, she disagrees with Marcus saying, saying that they do make a living wage and make enough money, all this stuff. And she goes on to explain her thoughts, which I've got to say, 
slightly concerning. They away from their families for a long amount of time. Yes, I know. The longest I was away from my family was 11 months. Is there a thing such as currency conversion? Yes, they're paid in US dollars. You hear me? US dollars. Hence the reason there are not a lot of Americans on board because we don't get currency conversion. Go ahead and look up the conversion rate for $1 for the Indonesian rupee. Month of salary that they're getting here is three months of salary back home. Okay, so as you just heard, her reasoning for the pay being enough is because the people who work on this ship, their cost of living in their home country is less than what it is in America. Therefore, when you get paid in dollars, even though it would be a low income in terms of dollars, it would be a high income in their home country. Which might be true, but doesn't it just seem a bit gross that a company that is worth how much? Let's have a look. $31 billion, according to Google, would purposefully hire people from a country that has a lower cost of living than America so that they can pay them less? According to Google, cruise ship staff that generally work in the kitchen, housekeeping, and medical departments will make between $1,200 and $2,500 a month. Bearing in mind they have to be away from home for many, many months at a time and literally have to live on a ship. I obviously don't know how much the people on the Royal Caribbean cruise are being paid, but it does seem like they're definitely being underpaid and the excuse that, oh, it's more in their home country doesn't really sit well with me. Now, after this, Mark actually ended up replying to the video and said this. Oh, girl, I'm not getting involved in all that, but it seems like after 10 minutes of research that the average yearly salary a Royal Caribbean worker makes is under $25,000. If you think that $25,000 is a livable wage, you're delusional. And uh, allegedly, there's like 100 countries that make up the employees or that, that the employees are from on this boat. Not all of them have a great conversion rate. Yikes. So yeah, as you can imagine, the response to her video wasn't exactly great. But yeah, I'm going to leave the video there. I would love to know your opinions on everything that we spoke about in today's video in the comment section down below. And if you did enjoy, please leave a like down below, subscribe if you are new. Until the next one, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, goodbye.